Welcome back to part three. So step number five was being very conscious about how I was spending my time. And I think one of the things that many of us can fall into is being busy and almost wearing that as a badge of honor. Like I spent all weekend on my business. I sat at my desk for 10 hours and didn't move. And when my clients talk about busyness and they talk about feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and all consume like they never switch off. One of my questions that I'm always asking people is what are you doing? Not in a kind of like, what are you doing? Um, But in a what's happening? What's taking up all of these hours? And are the things that you're doing actually translating into sales? Are they actually connecting with your customers? Are they getting you the results that you want? Because I'm not interested personally in my own life or business of just doing the same thing again and again. And like one of my things, I mean, my children would absolutely say this. I really dislike and get so impatient with repeating myself. It's one of my worst things because it gives me that claustrophobic feeling of going, why is nobody listening to me? And one of the things that I really implement, and my partner does as well, in our home is to put systems in place. So it's not like, I can't find my school bag, I can't find my school bag, where's my school bag? Everything has, I mean, everything is a bit chaotic sometimes as well, of course, because we're a busy family of four, but I try and put these things in place so there is a rhythm, there is a sense of it, and that we're using our energy effectively. I really hate looking for stuff. I really hate losing things as well. So one of the things that I noticed in that month of June 2020 was I became so visible. And if you are a personal brand, if you are the face of your business, this is crucial. And I see also so many people talking in a way where they'll say, I hate selling or I'm not really into being online that much, or I'm an introvert. And these things are all very well and good. However, if you want to sell, there has to be a point of contact. And one of the things that I say all the time to my clients is, imagine you have a physical space. Imagine you are the shopkeeper, the shop owner, and what you would have to do in order to welcome people in. First and foremost, you would have to open the doors. You would have to say that you are open. You would have to really show what you have to sell, what is available for people to buy. And one of the phrases I use all the time is, are you polishing the shelves? And there are some people who are behind the scenes in their business all the time. They're tweaking things on their website. They're looking at different colors. They're researching. They're watching other people's businesses the whole time. And and yes, there are a place, um, there is a place for all of those things, but not for too long. If you were the shop owner of a physical space, you need to be out front. You need to be at the checkout um, desk saying, hi, would you like to come and pay for that? Let me put it in a bag for you. This is how much it costs. Being in conversation with your client, your customer. And I do realize certainly looking back on that and I've gone over and looked at my Instagram stories. I was so visible each and every day. Hi, how are you doing? This is what I have to sell. This is what I'm doing today. This is what we're all about over here. These are the things that are important. This is what's working. This is what isn't. Oh, there's something brand new in. I'm doing this. Do you see what I mean? So if you are not getting the sales, not getting the traction that you want, check where your position is and imagine that you are in a physical shop and be really honest. Are you out there in having conversations or are you stuck in the back room, polishing shelves, looking at new stuff, um, half in, half out, listening to the radio and not being in conversation? Number six. I decided that this was going to be a month of significant change. And I didn't automatically assume that that would just happen, even though it was easier than I thought. However, I decided that I needed to step up. So again, I had to step up first, and then I got the step up results. 
I looked at my standards. I looked at the way that I'd been working. And again, bear in mind, my daughter was only nine months at the time. Um, and she was only about five months when I signed up to this coaching qualification. But what happened in that moment was by making that investment, I decided and I showed that I wasn't somebody who would be like, yeah, I'm kind of doing this and I'm kind of not. And there have been times in my life and my business where I have maybe been not flaky because that doesn't that doesn't give it credit. Um, I've had a lower sort of um, energy to it. And then I look at other times in my life when I've gone all in. And when I have that standard for myself, when I have that let's go, that's when things shift. Because that is so magnetic and it's so, um, it's really setting the standard of who you are. And when I look at the kinds of people that I want to work with, I want people who are like, excited about their business, who want to make change, who want to be in possibility, to see all of these things and not be somebody like, I don't know, uh, is this like even going to work? Like, I don't want people standing around with their arms folded. Likewise, if I'm ever doing anything in the theatre, I want people to play along. I don't want people to be on their phones. I don't want them to be thinking about their last train home. I want them to be absorbed in the atmosphere of it. So re-looking at my standards, the way that I wanted to do things, allowed me to welcome in more of the people that I was um, hoping that I would attract. And I also realized that it was all on me. And this again is annoying sometimes because the temptation or the easiest thing to do is to blame all of the other things or say that it's because of this and it's because of that and yes they may be factors but they might only be about 10% of the situation and the other 90% could be in your hands could be at you being honest with yourself and saying actually, I, I think I have maybe been a bit flaky about this. I, I am a bit in and out. I am like changing my mind all the time. I am really led by my feelings as to whether or not I feel like it on the day. And what I actually need is a bit more discipline. And maybe because I want to be disciplined, I need to do less or I need to give myself more time. But I have to show that I am in this, that I am willing to give this a go. So I would love to know what resonates with you there. In terms of next steps, go to my work with me page. If you are serious about making serious moves, my monthly moves package or my 100 day package is a game changer for you. And I think it would be really um, suitable for you if you want to have accountability and take imperfect action. I think sometimes people worry that they, you know, in terms of the 100 days, they might think, well, I don't know what I'm doing in 100 days. Or what if I can't find an hour a day? What if I can't work on my business every single day? What we're looking for is raising the average here. And so, yes, there might be four, day, four hours in one Saturday that you can really work on your business development and really do things that move the needle. And then maybe on the Sunday, the next day, you're like, I, I need to go offline completely. It will all even out. But maybe your average on the last 100 days is like 20%. What would happen if it would suddenly go up to 50%? How would that look and feel? If you want to find out more, as I mentioned, go to my work with me page. I'll see you over there. Send me a message. We can have a call, um, chat about what you want and get you started. Lots of love. Bye.